Hello, welcome to another Verisys video. My name is uh, Rob Sourd, and today I'm going to talk about the VEC100 and how it connects to Verisys and how you set it up in Verisys. So I have once again my uh, demo panel, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to log into my demo panel. And what you will see is on my demo panel I have a TEC3000. I have my zone coordinator and I have my IOM. So underneath my zone coordinator is where my uh, VEC100 will go. So VEC100 is a controller that is used for third party multi zone units. So either a VAV unit or a changeover bypass unit. So I have, uh, like I said with my demo panel, I have uh, a full changeover bypass system. Um, ready to set up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in my VEC100 and start getting it online. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up the bus already powered up and it'll come up, come up hopefully pretty quick. So this is the way I like to set up uh, zone coordinators um, and uh, changeover bypass system in multi-zones. Just to first start by getting a smart building hub hooked up to the zone coordinator. And then the next device that you want to bring on is the, um, the unit itself. So whether it be a VEC100 or whether it be a smart equipment rooftop unit. The reason why I like to do it this way is so that um, I can focus on, on major pieces of equipment at one time. So if I can get my zone coordinator talking to my rooftop unit, I then have the ability to start to send cold air um, or warm air down the duct and temper the space. So that is what um, uh, why I like to go this route. Then once I have the cold air going down the duct or have air blowing, I then can go to each device and set them up individually. So waiting for the VEC100 to be online, to come online. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to re, uh, oftentimes we'll uh, refresh the screen and it came up that time. So sometimes a screen refresh uh, will help this you know the data may be coming in and with a screen refresh it helps go a little bit a little bit quicker so we can see that my VEC 100 came online um, like I said I have my zone coordinator come online and I have my VEC 100 so I'm going to just jump into my zone coordinator and you'll notice that the zone coordinator populated with the VEC 100 information on the home page it's nothing else because I haven't brought on any zones. But uh, through the zone coordinator, the zone coordinator's already picked what type of unit it wants to be. The the uh, VEC100, whatever it came up with, uh, or whatever it is currently set up with, is what the zone coordinator will initially set to um, once the two sync together. So if I come over here to the details side, I can usually tell through this, I can tell that I'm not in any kind of voting system. This is a VAV unit because I've got a duct static pressure set point that I'm trying to achieve, et cetera. So what I wanna do is I wanna take and I wanna make a change over bypass system. So I'm gonna take my VEC100, click on it. And again, you'll notice that uh, it comes up and it's um, got the uh, circle of comfort. Um, the unit right now isn't running, and the reason being it isn't running is there is not a schedule in that zone coordinator. So we'll get this unit running, and we'll get the uh, unit set to change over bypass as we notice that it's already set to VAV. So to get it set, um, it's a section in the menu and. Um, your quick start guide will uh, elude you. The quick start guide is what came in the box with the VEC100, um, but it'll uh, point you to details, service, and 
factory, and this is where you set up pretty much the unit and what its equipment is. So I'm going to leave it at four stages of cooling, two stages of heating. I'll say, you know, leave it at all this, that I don't have an economizer. But if, um, if you do have any questions about what some of these parameters mean, or you forgot where they, where they could possibly be, there is uh, the Veracis User's Guide. And in the Veracis User's Guide, we go over step-by-step -step procedures on how to set up change over bypass systems, how to get the unit setting a VEC up for change over bypass. So we'll go over those steps. Also in the user's guide is the objects and parameters. So I'm going to touch on a number of objects and parameters, but um, there are all the objects and parameters. So right now I'm in, um, I'm underneath details, service, and factory. So details, set points, details control. So I keep scrolling down. As you can see, it's a pretty in-depth document, and it'll cover every uh, Veracis controller. And we'll give you some information on all of the, I must have passed it. Detail service factory. There we go. Yes, I did pass it. So if you do need to know exactly, I'm looking at, at the menu structure. Details meaning the first section, then service, then factory. And these are, you know, if you want to know what these parameters are, I've got a little description on what supply temp, temp alarm offset means. So if you need to know what that is, how to set it up, there's some. Uh, more information on about those parameters. So I'm going to jump back to Verisys and we're going to start setting up some of these uh, parameters. The pr main parameter that you have to set to say that it's a changeover bypass system is this rooftop unit controller type. As I suspected, it's set to VAV. So we're going to set it to changeover bypass. So once I do that, knock on wood, this uh, zone coordinator will switch. So notice now I went to the details section and it looks different. The voting system is set up. So the details about the changeover and the type is already set up. So that is uh, how you switch your zone coordinator to go from PAV to changeover bypass. It's all done through the unit, whether this is a third-party multi-zone unit or whether it's a smart equipment unit. It is literally the same technique. So you would go to, on again, both controllers, details, service, factory, and you're going to look for the rooftop unit controller type. And that sets what the whether it's VAV or changeover bypass. The uh, smart equipment unit has a couple more parameters in here besides VAV or changeover or bypass, and you can ignore those, but uh, that is what's setting and what the zone coordinator is looking for on, um, you know, so that way it can uh, set up, uh, you know, and be set up. So the other thing too, we notice that this rooftop unit controller isn't running right now. So let's get it running. Um, one of the things that, that I can tell you is going on is because I know that the occupancy schedule isn't been set. So let's set an occupancy schedule. So I'm going to go back to uh, my test schedule or, um, or I'm going to go back to my schedule sync. We could either use this schedule that's in here and sync it to it. Let's add another um, another schedule specifically for this. So I'm just going to essentially say it's occupied schedule is all the time while I'm working on it. We can come back later and we can set it between 9 to 5 and um, that sort of thing. But I'm just going to say it's on all the time. This will get it running. 
So when I set my schedule sync and I set it to my zone equipment controller, my um, zone controller, I'm going to say save. And now there will be a schedule in here occupied all the time. And now, knock on wood, hopefully we start running. So let's think about this. Why am I not running? Uh, it's a voting system. So voting system means it needs some votes to say, hey, I'm needing, I'm, I need some zones to start voting. So one of the things that's uh, unique about a changeover bypass system versus a VAV, a VAV system would have just ran if that was set to VAV. But what we have to do here is we need to actually, since there's no zones, we need to put this in construction mode. So this is where you get to decide because it's a voting system. Do I want fan only? Blow some air? Eh, sure, we'll put it in fan only. But I could have put it into cooling or heating and, you know, somehow, uh, you know, kind of temper the space based off of, you know, the conditions outside. So let's get some air blowing around. So I'm going to put it to fan only. And now notice my unit status is to fan only. Again, I could go back and um, put it to cooling. So come back to commission. Let's put it to cooling. Now, what that'll do will be, uh, should have jumped out, that means that the unit will now try to control to 55 degrees. So if I want to adjust that a little bit, I could trim that some. Conversely, if I would have set it to heating, I could control, you know, what is the discharge coming out of the unit. So now you should see why it's always nice to get your zone coordinator and always nice to get your unit up and running. Because then you can get some air moving and some uh, um, get some air moving and get get uh, you know the space tempered while you work on the zones. So before you set that fan, you better make sure that the zones are blocked open. So one of the techniques I like to do is I like to take and well with those zones is block them open and then then take off power and take off trunk. So on my demo panel. I've done exactly that. So I'm going to get some zones up and, and uh, working right now. And uh, um, then you can see some zones coming online. So I'm going to turn on the power in the trunk on the rest of those zones. Another reason why I like to do it this way is as you go from zone to zone, so the next device that I would hit since this is changeover bypass, I'd go to that bypass damper and get it working. Um, but as you hop from zone to zone or from controller to controller, as uh, you can see some of these zones are coming online. And last device I plugged in was the bypass controller, so that'll come on next. But um, then once you plug it on and bring it up is if for some reason, let's say this all went down and it went offline, but you'd find your trunk problems one device at a, at a time. Whereas if you brought it all up, just kind of like what I did, I at least know I have no wiring issues. I know I have no address conflicts. You know, you can weed through your problems, um, one controller at a time and it becomes more efficient. And you do a better job of bringing it up. So like I said, I like to block the damper open and uh, bring off those trunks before, you know, I bring up the unit the first and then go back and um, plug in the zone, plug in the power and plug in the, the addressing. So I'm going to hop back to my VEC 100 and uh, go through some more, some of the items on here. So the commissioning on a VEC 100, um, unlike a TEC, a TEC you need to do it at the stat, you can commission through the Verisys interface. So that allows you to then take your phone over by the unit if you can connect up um, to Verisys uh, and be there and 
individually, you have to start your commission. And then you have to say, hey, heating stage one, you're on. So that will override, even though it doesn't show right here, that will override the heating output to on. So currently, I have the heating output on my demo panel is showing on. The next, um, when you're when you're done, you can go through all the different spots. When you're done, you put it back to normal, and that will turn off your outputs. So other items to set up, um, you, the address, you can set up the address through Verisys. So it will start out with a default address of four. So if I didn't like four, um, I could change this at this particular time. So that would also be underneath commissioning. Um, I could go through and set, um, set up uh, any of anything I want to do for my cooling stages or my heating stages. Um, I like to keep my address set to four, and here's kind of why is I always like my unit to be the first device in the long list of things. So you could have a lot of zones, and if you put it in the middle, you're gonna have trouble finding it. But you notice these zones come in, and the zones are wired to the zone bus, so they come in in order of address. Now note that these zones have a clear address. They don't have the blue address. So what that means is physically, these devices are on the system bus, and these devices are on the zone bus. You can take a look at the MSTP, Verisys MSTP guide, and see where devices need to wire. A VEC 100 is always wired on the zone bus of a zone coordinator along with the bypass controllers and the zone controllers always wire on the zone bus. Those are the devices that, that wire here. If it's a uh, smart equipment rooftop unit, if it's VAV or changeover bypass, it must wire to the zone bus. Otherwise it could wire, if it's a single constant volume or a constant volume unit, it could wire to the system bus. Other uh, features about this controllers are the trends. So I just powered it up and we can get some trends on, you know, when did the fan come on and off? So we messed around a little bit with that. So I have some trends there. Uh, if you have a supplier temperature sensor wired in, I have just a thermostat pot you can uh, see the trends there. So anyway, that concludes VEC 100, how to set it up, how it works with the zone coordinator. Um, so we hope that you uh, view other videos from the various video series. So thank you very much.